Namaste, friends, and welcome back to day four of our 30-day meditation transformation. I hope you're enjoying the journey so far. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the benefits that we get from training our awareness and give you some tips, especially for those of you who may be struggling a little bit with the practice so far. So this is essentially it. Meditation, the practice of meditation, is training our awareness, developing our concentration of the mind to fixate on one point, and becoming aware of when the mind is wandering. I'm going to say this a lot because it's important to understand. Meditation itself, in the traditional sense, the word for meditation in Sanskrit it is dhyana. And dhyana is more a state of being, being present, being there without distraction. But when we practice meditation to get to that point of being, we are practicing to develop our awareness, to become aware of when the mind is going somewhere other than the present moment. And there's so many benefits that come just from this. We can enjoy our experiences more. We can be more present. We can be more helpful. We can be more efficient. Uh, a lot of studies have shown that when a person, the average person gets distracted, just you may, maybe you're on task at work and so, uh, you get a call that you weren't expecting and you have to switch gears in your mind. When you do that switch, it can take up to an hour and a half to come back to the state of flow, the state of focus you're in. Seasoned meditators, on the other hand, can come back very quickly because it's this training of the mind to move somewhere and to move back very quickly. This is why we're using this noting to ourselves when the mind has escaped us. Okay, so this is what I want you to focus on today and through the rest of this program is really being aware of that moment when you catch yourself. Not necessarily when the mind goes, because usually we don't notice the moment that the mind goes. But when you catch yourself, this is when you say to yourself, kind of let it wake you up. I am thinking, I'm coming back to the breath. <gasps> I am thinking, I'm coming back to the breath. Remember, like we said yesterday, we don't take the whip. You're not a terrible person. It happens to everyone. It happens frequently, more often than any of us would like to admit. The mind is escaping. But when you notice it, Bring awareness there. Let yourself be aware of that and come back. This training brings so many benefits with us. This is why meditation helps to lower anxiety, helps to remove distractions, helps us from not worrying, and, and helps to heal us emotionally because we notice when our mind is going in a direction that doesn't serve us, when our mind is taking us into something that's not even real, an alternate reality where we're infusing our beliefs, our expectations, our judgments of how something is, we're flavoring it with that, but it's not real. So when we're aware of when the mind is going there, we can say, ah, come back to the present, because the present, what's happening right here and now, is the only reality that really exists. The past is gone. It's uh, jaded by our memories. The future is jaded by our prediction and our experiences of the past, but the only real moment is here. So when we can train ourselves and really become aware of this moment, I'm not present, coming back. This has so many benefits. So really bring awareness and tell yourself at this point, I'm thinking, not in a bad way, not in a good way. Ha! Just as a very neutral, I'm thinking, I'm coming back to the breath and come back to tracing the flow of breath. This will take you very far. It's such a simple thing. But when you can be aware and you might be like, oh shit, again, oh again, oh again, I'm thinking, coming back. I'm thinking, coming back. I'm thinking, really highlight that exclamation part. I'm thinking. I'm coming back to the breath. Okay, uh, I'll go a little more into these benefits later, but right now there's a few more things I wanna, I wanna touch on that some of you might be experiencing. So when we are focusing on this developing awareness and concentration and we're really relaxed in our body, it's, it's lowering our brain waves. We're going down into a more relaxed brainwave state. We can go into the alpha state, we can go into the theta state. A lot of benefits, a lot of healing, a lot of stress reduction takes place in these states. Usually, our society is very dynamic. We're very go, go, go. We're always in the beta state. We're at a high frequency, sometimes even at a higher state. We drink coffee. We take stimulants. We do all these things to keep our mind at a high vibration. So a lot of us are not familiar with going into that relaxed state, with, with going into alpha, with going into theta. And the only time that we go into that is when we're either vegetating on the couch or when we're going to bed. We, we go through this descension of our brain waves as we're relaxing just to go to sleep. So what a lot of you might be experiencing 
as we're relaxing the mind, relaxing the body and, and developing this state of presence, is that we relax a little bit too much and you are all of a sudden watching the breath, breathing in, breathing, and you're getting this, this nod, this, this dropping out. It's like your mind is going unconscious. Very common. And it's a sign of healing. Remember, these states, these slower brain wave states are very healing, reducing stress, reducing cortisol, lowering the blood pressure, lowering the heart rate. So much healing takes place at this point. So it's a beautiful thing, but we want to stay awake. We don't want to drop out of consciousness. It's typically something that happens more earlier on in your meditation path. As, as you progress, it happens a lot less because there's less resistance to this state and there's more familiarity with it. But if it's happening to you, I encourage you, check your posture because if the posture is slouching, it's a lot easier to... So really, at this point, if you start dropping out, press in the seat, reach up to the crown, really try to find this very erect posture that will help you to stay more alert. And maybe you need to open your eyes. It can be very helpful to open your eyes, make sure you're not looking at something. Just glance about three feet, two feet, a meter, half a meter in front of you on the floor. Just very, and just keep your eyes open, just slightly, but not really looking at anything. Because having the eyes open can tell you, oh, I'm not actually going to sleep. I'm just watching the breath and staying present. So if you're nodding out, sit up straight, open the eyes, gaze somewhere blankly ahead of you. Uh, another thing that a lot of people experience, especially early on in their meditation, is itchy. <laughs> you got an itch here, you got an itch here. All of a sudden you're supposed to sit still and things are itching all over the place. And this can also be attributed to going into that slower brain frequency and healing taking place. Much like when you've got a cut and, and the cells are repairing and you get this itchy. We're giving some similar effect to our nervous system when we're calming everything down. We're allowing it to rebuild, to restore and to heal. So that can give us this sensation of itchy all over the body as this healing effect is taking place. So like I mentioned before, if that happens, if you have an itch, you can scratch it. Don't be afraid to move, but before you do, just like you notice when the mind wanders, bring that, I have an itch, witness it for a second, and then very carefully go to scratch it with full awareness, awareness of every movement, so you don't break that concentration. Don't just be like, fly on my face. Oh, wake up out of the meditation. No, fly on the face. Man, if you've got flies when you're meditating, this is such a painful but powerful tool for developing this awareness of the senses, control, and, and really choosing to consciously make an action. I think that's enough said for now. So just recap, meditation is very healing. We're reducing cortisol, we're reducing anxiety. We're helping to restore our nervous system, repair ourselves, be more present, improve our memory. Beautiful things. If you're nodding out, sit up straight, open the eyes. If you're itchy, you need to make any adjustments. Feel free, you don't have to resist it, but bring awareness. Notice the moment before you move. Okay, uh, I want to say one more thing because after today, we're going to be going into a, a, we're learning a new asana tomorrow. And as we're progressing in this path, the asanas are going to require more flexibility of the hips, uh, more flexibility of the ankles. So if you're already struggling with the pose and you're maybe not warming up with the 30 day Kundalini program, I highly recommend you to check out this other program called the Pavanamukt Asana series where we work on waking up all the joints of the body. For the purpose of this meditation, you only need to do the first uh, section of it where we deal with the legs, but we wake up the toes, the ankles, the knees, the hips. I had to look at my legs to remember the parts of the leg. <laughs> uh, but I'll leave a link to that here. I'll leave a link to that to the, in the description. So if you are someone that's struggling to find comfort in your meditation posture, taking a few minutes to do these warm-ups before the meditation can make you that much more comfortable and can prepare your body for the more advanced meditation posture. Posture is not important. The centering of the mind is important. So what is more advanced is how still you are able to go inside, not at all what you look like from outside. But still, especially for people who are developing their meditation, it's good to be aware that you've got all these different postures. It's good to work to balance right and left. And that's one of the intentions behind this 30 day challenge. Uh, so check that video out if you want and beautiful. <laughs> I think that's enough. Let's get ready for our meditation.
So our posture again today will be Ardha Siddhasana, the half perfect pose. Uh, again, if you need some prop for elevating the hips, I recommend you take it. Today, I'm going to use the yoga block, the Shiva there. Uh, so you can take your prop posture, we'll start with the wide legged stance, and you can place it at the sacrum, you can sit on top of it. Honestly, this was my meditation cushion for years. I use this all the time, I travel with it, and it was very difficult for me to ever meditate without a, a yoga block. But if you need it, take it, if you don't need it, no worries. So then from here we're going to bring one heel to the perineum, or the opening of the yoni, and we're going to place some pressure there at Muladhara Chakra. Then we're going to bring our other heel, stack it in front, so that we're sitting nice and tall. Remember, if you need any pillows under the knees or any other supports, take it. You want to sit nice and tall, pressing down into the heel, reaching up to the crown of the head. Roll the shoulders back and down. Close the eyes. Take a deep inhalation through the nose. Open the mouth and sigh it out. And as you do, relax the face. Relax the jaw, the shoulders, the arms. Again, deep inhalation. Open the mouth, side out. <sighs> Relax the chest, the abdomen, the pelvis. Again, deep inhalation. Side out. <sighs> Relax the pelvis, the hips, the knees, all the way down to the toes. Sitting with the eyes closed, bring your awareness to the respiration flowing in and out through the nose. Feel the breath coming in through the nose, down the throat, deep down into the belly. Feel the belly expand with the inhalation. Feel the belly sink in as the breath travels up the throat and out the nose. Continue tracing the path of the breath. If you find you have a tendency to control the breath when you witness it, try to just control it in what feels like the most natural rhythm for you. Eventually you will find yourself just witnessing the breath. Being aware of all the physical sensations, subtle vibrations of the breath moving in and out of the body. Let your mind be fully concentrated on the sensations of the breath. And if at any point you notice the mind has wandered, at this moment note to yourself, I am thinking, I'm coming back to the breath. And bring your mind back to the present, to the physical sensations of the breath moving in and out. Continuing to observe the movement of breath. If at any point the mind wanders, note to yourself, I am thinking, I'm coming back to the breath.
Keeping the eyes closed and the attention turned inside, slowly make your way into the alternate meditation posture, releasing the legs, bringing the opposite heel to the perineum or opening of the yoni, stacking the heels in front of each other, make any adjustments to find comfort in the pose, and again coming back to the breath. Observing the path of the breath in through the nose, down the throat, expanding the belly, relaxing the belly, breath flows up the throat and out the nose. If it helps you, you can mentally note what you're doing by mentally saying to yourself, breathing in, Breathing out. Keeping the attention focused fully on the sensations of the breath, noticing if the mind wanders and calling it back. And if you're feeling tired, check your posture, make sure you're sitting nice and tall. If you need to, you can open your eyes slightly and gaze blankly at the floor in front of you. Keep the attention inside, witnessing the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
Sitting with the eyes closed, attention turned inside. Witness your overall state of being after the practice. Notice how many times you caught yourself when the mind has wandered. Every time you catch the mind is a success. Success in the practice of training the mind for meditation. Tell yourself thank you for this time and space. You did a great job today. Take a deep inhalation into the heart. And as you exhale, gently coming back. So I can say thank you once again for joining me. I hope you had a beautiful time. Let me know in the comments how it's going. I'm also interested which uh, orientation of the pose you're finding more comfortable or more challenging. It's different for everybody. Uh, and remember, if you are struggling to, uh, to sit in the postures at all before tomorrow's class, you might want to try the Pavana Muktasana series to help to wake up the hips and, and ankles. Hope you have a beautiful day, guys. Namaste.